so far, we have focused on yields when we are comparing bond funds. Now we are going to look at returns. Remember what returns and yield to maturity are. Yield to maturity, forward-looking. We can calculate that every day based on what the market is, but it is a forward-looking measure. It's saying that if you buy this bond and all the scheduled payments are made, this will be the, 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 the yield on that bond fund. Actual return, returns are backward-looking. This is what the return from holding that bond has been. Calculating returns from bonds is the same as it is for any financial asset. We take the capital gain, add the dividend, or, in the, or the current return, which in this case are the coupon payments, and divide it by the price of the bond at the beginning of the period. We use this formula for equities. We use this for, for, for a formula for mutual funds that were equity-based. We use the same fund, the same formula for bonds and bond mutual funds. I am going to give an example of capital gains here in a minute, but just remember, capital gains from a bond are impacted by changes in yield to maturity. We see the yields go down, we will have a capital positive capital gain. If yields go up, we'll have a capital negative capital gain or a capital loss. So if, yield, if yields change, we will have a capital gain. We will also have a total return that will vary for, from the initial yield to maturity. I'm going to demonstrate this in Microsoft Excel for a bond. And what we're going to do is calculate total returns when yields do not change and then calculate it when yields do change. Here is the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. And again, what we're going to do is calculate re returns for a bond held for a year. And we're going to calculate it once with, not, with no yield change. And then we're going to calculate a yield change. Just to give you a ba background on the bond, it's a five-year bond, 10-year semi-annual payments when we first have it, 2% coupon payment. We're going to calculate total returns now and in a year from now, at that point in time, this five-year bond will be a four-year bond. Here is the calculation of the bond price given a 3% yield to maturity in year one. Here's the, the calculation of the bond price given a 3% yield to maturity in year two. We calculate the, the bond price by doing the same thing we always do, discounted cash flows for the 10 periods here. We're using a discount factor based on a 3% yield to maturity and our cash flow. It's a 2% coupon rate, so we have $10 semi-annual period. Year two, now we no longer have the first two payments. They're, 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 they've been made, right? So at, the, at, the, at that year two time point, we have four years of eight semi-annual payments, and we can calculate the bond price. Want you to notice something here. The bond price for this has actually gone up. There has been no change in yield, but we go from $953 in year one, $962 in year two. Fundamentally, why that is happening is this cash flow at the end of the period goes from $870 to $896. It's being discounted two less times. All right. Here's our total return for year one, $20 of, 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 of current return from these two cash flows that we've now received, and $8.68 cent capital gain, $9.62.57, $9.53.89 to come up with a total return of $26.68. And our total return when we divide it by the bond price is 3% exactly the same as our yield to maturity was. So in this case, yields have not changed. We get our 3% return for that period. Now, I'm going to say, change this yield to maturity. Let's say during this year, um, we had like 2020. Yields went down, all right? 
So let's say yields go down. We know that this bond price is going to go up, So, but let's just trace it all through. All right, bond price goes up to $1,000. We still have the same current return for the period, but now our capital gain is $46.11. Total return is $66.11, $66 and our total return is 6.9%. Current coupon payment has remained the same, but our capital gain has increased because our bond price went up. Okay. If we had a mutual fund, its net asset value would have changed during the period, and that would be what would be showing on our statement. Now let's do the opposite. Oops. Let's go the opposite way. Go back to our three percent. Where? Oops go back to our 3%, our 3% return. Now if we go to 4%, hit 4%, this bond price is going to go from 962 to 926. We have a capital gain of minus $27. Total return is minus 7, minus 0.7% return. So if you have a bond fund during a year, you bought a mutual fund that's bonds, or have bonds in it, you could have a negative return even if it's treasuries. Treasuries have no default risk, but you could have a negative return on it because of yield changes. Conversely, if yields go up or down, you could have a capital gain. So, if you're holding bond funds, even if they're treasuries, you're going to have changes in that bond fund depending on what yields do during the period. All right, so we've shown that yields will change during the period. What's going to cause those yields to change? Now I would list those factors out by general economy and then individual bond. In the general economy, you can have general yield changes because of Fed actions and economic reasons. So Fed's trying to m move the, the yield curve up and down. We could also have changes in that yield curve because of just general economic demand for m money, for example. There could also be ge other general economic reasons that would impact yields, particularly on risky bonds. If we have a situation where we're going into a recession and, and, and or a recession and people believe the general economy is becoming more risky, we would see higher yields for corporates and munis, and so that would have an impact on bond re bond returns or bond yields and then bond bond returns. An individual bond could change because of a change in the company's or muni's financial position. You will often see in Wall Street Journal or other places a, a, a notice that a bo company's bond rating has changed, and that then could have an impact on its bond prices and therefore the resulting capital gains.